Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is the 17th of April, 2015, and we're uh, plowing right through the spring here. Uh, been uh, more biblical proportion rain. Good times. Good times. I've managed to sort of sleep through the good days and awake on the bad days for painting, so... I'm going to go take a nap after I'm done with this, because there's no sense of being awake if I can't do anything. Am I right? Kids are asleep, so why shouldn't I? Uh, what we got going on this week, guys, is, well, some really fun and interesting news uh, in advance of the Shizuka Hobby Show that will be uh, this week and next month. Uh, all of the information has been officially leaked, as it were, so we're going to take a look at what we can expect uh, through the summer months out of Japan. As well as uh, we're going to have some uh, big changes coming to the stash report. Uh, this whole thing, this is all going to change. Not this background, but this location. Uh, after many months of uh, moving the mail around and uh, enjoying that job, but not the people I work for, I no longer work there. We'll be starting a new job on Monday. And that will be putting the stash report in a mobile status. So we're going to keep recording the videos on Friday. It'll just be a matter of finding uh, a robust enough internet connection uh, in a mobile sense to get the videos up onto YouTube. They probably will become uh, a lot shorter <laughs> as we try to compress the uh, you know videos down into something uh, you know resembling tolerable. This is going to change. Uh, probably see me freehand miking this rather than taking this entire mic stand on a truck with me uh, until I get a lapel mic that I like, so that I can, you know, drop the uh, Ray Charles uh, piano microphone. And then uh, this is all going to go because I got to get a new ID picture taken at work, and I don't want to look like Grizzly Adams when that happens. So. The next time you see me, uh, won't be clean shaven because if you're, if you've been following us since last summer, I've always had a goatee going on, but this whole thing just sort of developed over the winter and the wife liked it and that was all fine and well, but, uh, you know, don't want to look like a scrub for the new job. So at least for the picture that I'm going to get <laughs> taken from my, on my, you know, welcome to the company ID card that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dim this down a little bit and, uh, you know. We'll see if we grow back or not. Summer is getting hot. So uh, we have two new kits, uh, basically, uh, you know, little modifications, decals, or addition of some parts from uh, both uh, Fujimi and Aoshima, as well as one reissue from Aoshima, which we'll get to a little bit later. But we do have here is a page full of things that I don't know if you can read this or not, but it says Shizuka News. Now, uh, I know for, you know, all the military people, this is, you know, may or may not interest you because I'm going to leave out all that stuff, but this is all the car-based stuff that we expect to get out of, uh, Tamiya, Hasegawa, B-Max, and Aoshima. Now, Aoshima is B-Max's distributor, so a lot of the stuff you're going to see is considered to be an Aoshima kit, but it is, uh, solely a B-Max uh, out of Macau project that uh, Aoshima is their distributor for. Now, what we're going to try to do here, something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to take this camera and spin it around, aim it at my computer monitor. Now, that may cause a great deal of yucky-looking interference, but I don't want to run the old camera and, uh, you know, deal with the cruddy video. Uh, so we're going to... I have a bunch of flyers and stuff that I want to show you guys as we go through this stuff. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to go with it. It's, I know it's a little choppy in the background there, but we're going to deal with it. So first up, uh, from Hasagawa, they're going to be uh, doing a modified tooling of their uh, Nissan Sunny that they put out uh, this uh, spring. Or actually, it's supposed to be last fall, technically. Uh, this is going to be the GB120 version. The kit that came out before was the GB121. That was the uh, sort of mid-grade of the three different ways you could get this truck over the generations. Uh, that was like 1971 to 1974. This is the GB120. As you see down here, they're calling it the early version. This is because this is the original uh, version of the truck. It says 1973 to 1979. But uh, the kit, the uh, actual GB120 didn't run that the, that many years. 
uh, it ran a little earlier than that. So uh, what you're going to get out of this kit, guys, is like a new grill area, uh, new mirrors, these new uh, dog dish hubcaps on steel wheels, as well as a new uh, interior. This is being offered uh, or, or being you know sold as a limited edition kit, so uh, sort of a one-and-done uh, kind of tooling. Now, we were expecting the GB122, which is sort of the... 1979 to mid 80s version that the Sunny ran as its last version that came with like square headlights because some of those parts are in the GB121 version, which, like I said, is like type. This, if this is type 1, the GB121 that's already out is type 2, and then there's a type 3, if you want to call it that kind of thing. You want to think of it that way. Uh, the you know the instructions on the GB122 call out 120 or one on the 121 call out 122 parts that are included with it that you don't use because you're not building that version. So it's kind of interesting to see this one come out or uh, come out and why it sort of came out first. But hey, we'll take it. Uh, this is a June release. Now Tamiya is going to be doing. Uh, two reissues and one brand new kit. The two reissues are the Toyota Land Cruiser ADVX and the Toyota Land Cruiser ADVX Sport Option. Uh, people may remember the Sport Option has a different set of wheels, uh, bigger, more off-road tires, sort of a steel front bumper with a brush guard, roof rack, uh, roof lights, uh, and a great big roof basket. Uh, the, the regular ADVX is more of a, a, a you know factory stock version. Uh, the kits were pulled back in 1991. Uh, they may have been reissued since then, uh, at least once or twice. But uh, especially the sport option one hasn't been out for a good long time, and they're very, very expensive on eBay. So it's uh, great to see these coming back out. The factory stock version will be out in June, and the sport option version is coming out in July. Now, there's going to be a brand new kit, and that is this little number right here. This is a 1936 Toyota. This is before the T was added, back when the company still had the original founder's, Mr. Toyota's name attached to it, <coughs> what they're calling a Type AA, or just the Toyota AA. This was the first mass-produced vehicle made by Toyota uh, in its history. Uh, copied a lot of the drivetrain and engine parts off of a uh, period Chevy, and this, of course, looks very much like a Chrysler Airflow because that's what they sort of mimicked it off of. Uh, but this is going to be a brand new tool. It is partially uh, blown up. Uh, military guys may recognize this as the Toyota Phaeton, the AB type that they sold in 135th scale in the military line. Uh, I imagine that a good chunk of this kit is going to be blown up from that original AB kit because the only difference between an AA and an AB is the AA has a steel roof where the AB is a Phaeton or a soft top. Uh, there's no word of whether or not this thing is going to actually have an engine. Uh, I had a friend on the Creativity uh, Facebook page. It's a Japanese-based uh, modeling thing. It sort of translate these pictures uh, to tell me what they said, and it's just these are going to be chrome plated, and this is going to be photo etch and uh, new tires, and you know, so very de designed to show the spacious interior and uh, all this the pedals and the shifter and the wheels and all these suspension pieces are going to be accurately done. You know, it's just advertising basically. But they couldn't read what this blob down here or this one right here, but that really doesn't matter. But this blob down here by the chassis says no. So don't don't know if this is just going to be like a like an engine insert to a bottom that's going to connect down here, and you're just going to have the bottom of the engine, or if this, you know, is going to have a full detail engine. We won't know until, I mean, when Shizuka comes uh, up in the next month, of course, we'll get all the information and see test shots of this, because this is due out in June. So uh, they're going to give you that Honda S8, S600, the first mass-produced Honda vehicle, com coming out next month in, in May, and then in June... You get the first uh, mass-produced Toyota vehicle ever done. I see a pattern developing. I like it. Um, just a very interesting vehicle. Uh, you know, you could make a, you could make an Americanized version of a hot rod out of this, or you could certainly make a uh, JDM hot rod out of this. You know, put a, the engine out of a Supra or the LFA's drivetrain, perhaps. A whole bunch of different options with this, other than just building it factory stock, or I should say factory replica, because when Toyota went to make this, uh, get one of these for their museum, couldn't find one, so they had to build this car 
off the factory blueprints, basically from scratch. So a little interesting history there, too. And that brings us over to the BMAX and Aoshima thing. Uh, you know, there's a train up here and a bus up here, and there's a submarine over here for a anime series. But from here up and here over, these are all going to be BMAX kits. Now, what you're looking at here is the 120th scale McLaren MP4-2 or slash 2 done up in the 1984 British Grand Prix livery. More than likely, you're going to have to source yourself some uh, Marlboro decals because this is clearly a Marlboro paint scheme, but there won't be, actually, probably won't be. Now, it is Macau, so they're sort of, you know, it's China. They don't care. So you may get Marlboro logos here in here anyway, but I believe there are 120 scale Marlboro logos floating around there anyway. Uh, it's a brand new piece of tooling. This is actually what got uh, Fujimi to cancel their 120 scale planned M4-2, so a little revenge from BMAX and Aoshima on that part. Uh, you'll notice all these BMAX kits have the second little block down here. These are detail upsets, factory detail upsets for these kits, so that's what the second thing is here. But this is supposed to be out in May. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. <laughs> I have seen test shots of this done, so it is done. It is in tooling and it is being refined. So this month, I doubt it, but sooner than later. This right here is your Toyota Celica TA64 rally car being done up in the 1985 Safari Rally uh, livery. Uh, they've got a test shot of the body so far. This will be a curbside, like all of these kits. Well, I think there's an engine to this, but these. All these uh, 124 scale kits are curbside. So, got a test shot of the body. It's teeny tiny here. Uh, if you go on Hobby Search, you can blow it up a little bit and see that it looks like the body shell of a Toyota Celica. Uh, this again says it's coming out in May. I find that to be a wildly optimistic release date, considering the fact that uh, it's mostly in 3D CAD at the moment. <laughs> uh, that brings us over here to the Chevy Cruze uh, 1.6T. 2012 World Tour uh, World Touring Car Championship car. Uh, this has been done since last year. It has been in licensing, officially licensed by GM, yay, but it's been uh, in licensing limbo ever since. Finally, they've gotten approval from GM to produce this kit, uh, and it's going to be coming out in June. The first run of this kit is allegedly the only one that's going to come with all three cars worth of decals to do all of the uh, factory Chevrolet teams. There's the World Tour car. One of these is the actual championship car that was driven you know, to the championship, and then I think the other two cars finished second and third in the 2012. They did really good in 2012 as a, as a factory team. Uh, that may have been part of what the holdup was as far as the factory Chevrolet team part of this, because after this first run, the Chevrolet team uh, decals are going out the window. So if you want to build the factory team, you need to buy it right, well, right away. You need to buy it when it comes out and not wait until it goes you know, discontinued and you have to wait for a second run, because what decals are going to come in the second run, I don't know. I can also tell you that Auto Color, which is based in Macau with BMAX, well, not, they're not part of BMAX, but you know they're based in Macau along with BMAX, He's going to be doing two sets of decals for uh, the Macau Grand Prix endurance cars that uh, the cruises were in. So you may need more than one of these, depending on how you like it when it builds up. This thing in the middle here is your EF3 Group A Honda Civic. This is still just in CAD at this moment. I have not seen a test shot or anything resembling this thing hitting tooling or plastic yet, although they think this is going to be out in June. I think they're lying. Uh, it's, uh, only a race car. It's not going to be done as a street car as of right now. Uh, it'd be nice if they did the Celica as a street car too, because that generation Celica is sort of forgotten generation of Celica as well. But, uh, this is a road race car. Um, I, there's not really much to say about it right now because it only exists as this drawing. Over here, you have the Nissan 240RS, uh, being done as the 1983, um, See if I find my notes here. Being done as the 83 New Zealand Rally. This is a brand new announcement. I have heard nothing of this kit uh, until they put this flyer out last week. Uh, obviously, the body is in CAD over here. This is a picture of the real car in the Nissan Museum. They're saying July, which, again, I find to be wildly optimistic. Um, 
I don't know much about this other than it's a Nissan rally car from 1983. So, <laughs> wish I had more to tell you about it, but r- literally, literally just found out about this last week, or why should say this week. Uh, you got a couple of 172nd scale military kits. Here is the 1988 Lamborghini uh, Countach 5000 Quattrovol, done in the 1988 fuel injected version. This is now in, uh, plastic test shot mode, and they're giving a June release date here. I think that might be a little optimistic based on what we've seen, but then there's only some new parts to this. It isn't a completely new kit. You're getting basically this, this side skirt here, some interior parts, engine cover, and of course the brand new engine top, the fuel injection parts. So maybe June, but, uh, we'll, we'll hold our breath on that one. Over here is yet another McLaren long tail, uh, Apparently, the pre-sales for the McLarens have been doing so well that that convinced them to do yet another liveried version of the long tail. A lot of us would like a short tail or would like a F1 street car to replace the Fujimi one uh, or would like the street version of the long tail because several, well, I think two or three of these were made into street cars after the racing career was over. But you're going to get this one. This is the uh, fourth place finisher for the 1988 uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans. It was also the uh, championship car for the 1988 British GT uh, Touring Series. It will be interesting to see if they do this with two sets of decals. Basically, this is the EMI-sponsored car. You can look online and find this. Uh, the number two, I believe, is the British uh, GT Touring Championship, and it ran as the number 40 in the Le Mans. So basically, they just need to replace the the uh, little circle two with a squared uh, 40 and, you know, they, it, it, the rest of the decals are pretty much the same. But I would imagine they'll probably have both sets. If it doesn't, somebody will make the other, like, fill-in part. Uh, July on that one. Down over here, as we continue our left-to-right traversing of this flyer, you have pre-painted versions of the rele- the Crown uh, that were released last year. The uh, Crown Royal Hybrid is being done in silver. The Crown Athlete done in black. So basically, these are going to be just pre-painted like the box art cars, for lack of a better presentation of it. Both those coming out in June. This is the 2015 Nissan GTR Premium Edition North America version. Yes, folks, we told you this was going to come uh, back when the Pure Edition JDM car came out. Here it is, June release. Uh, this will just basically have that uh, insert we've talked about uh, a long time ago, probably uh, four or five months ago, that has the left-hand drive interior, the left-hand drive wipers, and that kind of stuff, because the, those interior parts haven't changed from 2007. Uh, but this will allow you to have the left-hand drive version of the most recent GTR. This over here is a 1996 Toyota, or Toyota, ha, Mazda RX-7 FD3S Type 4. This is going to have a new wing, new wheels, and a couple other little bits and pieces here. This uh, kit allows Aoshima to proudly claim that they have all f- of the generations of the FD3S car uh, done. More than likely it will be a JDM car because all the rest of them have been, as far as the interior goes and whether or not it has left-hand drive. There, There is a left-hand drive version of the FD3S RX-7, uh, from Aoshima, but of course the Tamiya kit has an engine and is probably a better kit overall. If you want to build a left-hand drive car, you want to build right-hand drive, this is the one that's been missing out of your collection. Here's yet another version of the Best Car Vintage Corolla tooling. This is going to be the E70 sedan uh, late type. It's going to have new grill, new bumpers front and back, new wheels, new mirrors. I think there's a couple of interior pieces that are different. And then uh, the decals to represent the newer Toyota logos there. So uh, yet another running, I mean, they're really getting their, considering how old this tooling is, they're really getting their money out of it recently. Uh, this is a Liberty Walk version of a police car. Uh, the LB Works Ken and Mary 330 Nissan Laurel done as a police car. Uh, getting some... Uh, like new fender flares here, some new wheels. There's a couple of new pieces to this. The light bar will probably be repurposed out of the police car stuff they have lying around from the mid-'90s. You know, if you're into that kind of thing, there it is. <laughs> I don't really have much else to say about that. I mean, it's really a wild thing. Obviously, it's not representing any real thing. It's just their the Liberty Walk guys' take on a police car. Uh, a couple more last things here. This is the K-Brake, what they're calling the uh, <clears throat> the... Let me find my notes again. 
I have these written down out of order of the actual thing, so bear with me here for a second. This is the K-Brake Crown Hyper Zero Custom Volume 1, or Version 1, rather. Uh, this is going to be basically this crown done as a VIP car. Uh, this is a brand new mold for all of the uh, exterior pieces, bumpers and, and side pieces, and this goofy rear diffuser, and all of these aero panels, headlights, new 19-inch wheels uh, with a set of uh, what I, they're calling them pool tires. I believe they're Kiwami tires probably with that. No, don't quote me on that because we don't know enough about it yet, but that just seems to be where that one's headed. And here you have a uh, Impal branded uh, they're saying K-Brake here as well, but uh, Impal brand um, Nissan SEMA. This is the Y31 generation. Uh, Obayashi is what they're calling it. This, again, they're going to have a brand new molding for all of the uh, K-Brake Obayashi parts. So all the I mean, basically everything from here down, all of the ground effects and these the new, new set of 18-inch wheels here. Uh, it says 18-inch pool tires. I don't know if there's a set of Kwamis in 18 inches or not, or maybe this is just going to be 18 inches kind of tires. Uh, but you do get a bunch of new stuff in this um, that was not in any of the previous uh, Y31 SEMA VIP cars that they've done. It'd be interesting to see if this is actually a brand-new mold, brand-new mold. This one mm, probably won't be unless it's a whole brand-new body that goes on the, ex the existing uh, crown parts because there is an older best car vintage version of the Y31 SEMA that has, you know, a pretty basic chassis. Uh, it came with the ability to have an engine that you could cut the hood out if you wanted to. So it'd be interesting to see if this is an all new tool or a brand new body on the old parts or what it comes out to be. Uh, and so we got a couple of 132 scale trucks, a couple more submarines, a couple airplanes, a couple 1700 scale, uh, uh, ships, uh, a battery-powered tank, some 172nd scale uh, easy boulder tanks, and 112 scale pre-assembled motorcycles, and then we're down here for this. This is what we stopped for. This is the 124 scale uh, uh, Cebu, Cebu Kitsatsu, uh, you may recognize this logo from all the, the machine cars that we had to deal with uh, <laughs> over the last fall and the beginning of the spring. This is a Nissan Safari, probably better known outside of Japan as the Nissan Patrol. Uh, it's a big full-size Nissan uh, 4x4 SUV that was uh, was a competitor to the uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, if you go back through the Toyota or the Toyota, you go back through Nissan's history of what the what the what the Patrol was. It looked very much like a Jeep when it first came out, and it looked very much like a Toyota Land Cruiser, almost a direct carbon copy. And then this is the third gen. Uh, it comes with this, what they're calling a tank car. I believe that you can strip off most of this junk and just build it as a Nissan uh, Safari or a Nissan Patrol. Uh, however, this is a really, really old, old, basically toy that was turned into a model kit kind of deal. So, uh, you know, you're kind of left with wondering what exactly you're going to get out of that. So, uh, Anyway, that's that. So let's move on to the new releases for this month. Okay, guys. So let's take a look at what the new kits, quote unquote, are this uh, <clears throat> this week. We have uh, one new kit from Fujimi, one new kit from Aoshima, as well as a reissue, reissue rather from Aoshima. This is the McLaren F1 road car. This is the DX edition. This is the deluxe edition of this vehicle. Uh, you really have to pay attention to the box art here, guys, because only that little yellow printing up there in the corner is going to tip you off that this is, in fact, the deluxe version of this kit. Uh, I'm sure the end cap would have a, uh, a uh, you know, going to have a, 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 a inch up number with a, with a DX next to it indicating this, the deluxe. But, you know, if you're buying this thing off of eBay or someplace where you can't see the end sides of the box, uh, you know, you're going to have to rely on the box top. So uh, this is essentially effectively the same kit that was uh, run out, oh, I want to say two, almost two years ago now, if it's not actually is two years ago. It is, well, you know, it's the only model kit that isn't resin. Uh, you know, one of those 100-plus resin uh, kits from uh, Studio 27, or uh, I'm thinking there's another company that did one resin, too, but Studio 27 is the one that pops into my mind. At any rate, 
it's not the greatest kit in the world. It was really kind of a letdown. Uh, if anybody has you know seen, say, uh, Jonathan Stevens' video about the McLaren F1 GTR short tail race car, or knows anybody who's built either the street car or the race car knows that it has some issues, proportionally speaking, and it has some issues with like a one piece engine insert and things of that nature. But you know, if you want to build an F1 McLaren, this is pretty much the only game in town. So you sort of have to make with what you're given, I guess. What makes it deluxe is the inclusion of this uh, optional parts package. Uh, it gives you window masks, which from the looks of it are not pre cut the way Tamiya's or Aoshima's are. Uh, a number of Fujimi's kits recently say they come with window masks come with this great big piece of masking tape that may or may not have the window mask printed on the one side of it, but it's not actually pre-cut. You have to cut it out with a hobby knife and then try to apply it. And uh, I freehand painted my 12C GT3 windows for that McLaren I built for uh, Tactical Jackalope because the window masks were basically useless. It also comes with this photo etch set, a set of uh, like real metal turned exhaust tips and some... Uh, metal transfers for the scripting. So, you know, I, I don't know that it's worth an extra $5 that it's going to cost over a regular F1, although I don't believe the regular F1 is available. I mean, they're on eBay all over the place, but I don't believe it's actually a kit that was actually being sold at the moment. Over on uh, the Aoshima side of things, you're going to get the, finally, the 1998 Le Mans Racing 24 Hours Loctite number 41 McLaren F1 GTR Long Tap. I think this was supposed to come out in January, maybe December of last year. Many delays for getting this done. They've done a bunch of just very minor uh, modifications to the tooling to help fit and, uh, and uh, you know, accuracy issues for now these being actually race-specific vehicles. Uh, there's, the of course, the Golf McLaren that's going to come out uh, next month, hopefully, as well as the other McLaren we talked about earlier. That's going to come out over the summer. So uh, this has a set of cartograph decals, so you know the decals are going to be good quality there. It also comes with like a partial carbon fiber set, which is new to these McLarens. The presentation version, and anybody who bought one of these in the what they call the overseas packaging, because uh, you can buy an, a, a Golf McLaren from Ayoshima right now in the States. Uh, we saw them pop up at a show in Arizona uh, last weekend as well as the Loctites are available here in the States, but they do not have the new new decal sheet that's going to be in these what they call domestic versions that you're going to be able to buy from Hobby Link Japan or Hobby Search. It's not a big, complicated sheet like the Studio 27 carbon fiber decal set itself is. However, it uh, does cover like the most glaringly obvious carbon fiber pieces so that uh, you know it sort of covers the most visible things. You know, like I said it's not it's it's nowhere near the she's almost 150 piece decal count that the Studio 27 set is, but you know if you're just showing off the engine or you just have a door open, it's going to cover your most basic needs. It's it, it's along the lines of the uh, carbon fiber set that comes with the Ferrari Enzo uh, complete set, the Tamiya kit. There's a Ferrari Enzo Tamiya kit that's called like the Detail Up set that comes with Photo Etch and with a small sheet of carbon fiber decals that's along those lines. And then last but not least is the uh, reissue of the 1992 Toyota Hilux double cab lift up. Uh, this kit has this great big chrome suspension. Uh, these kits continue to be very popular. Um, it's a shame that they don't include the left hand drive parts with these. These were available in the United States at one point in time with left hand drive parts. So left hand drive parts exist for this kit, mainly because they were tooled up for the uh, Hilux Surf, which we call the Toyota 4Runner here in the United States, and there were a limited number of these kits run off in, I want to say the mid-2000s, probably about, you know, close to 10 years ago, that were sold specifically as export kits uh, and included left-hand drive. I wish they would put the left-hand drive parts in. I've checked the parts tree, uh, you know, runners for this again and again it only has the JDM setup which is funny because these Hilux trucks are US spec trucks <laughs> so it's a US spec truck with Japanese Japanese right hand drive I guess it is what it is be not, I said it'd be nice to stay through the one you know two parts trees and you need a set of windshield wipers and a dashboard basically to convert it 
and uh, you know it would probably be a great deal more popular to the stick in the mud types that insist on their U.S. trucks having U.S. left hand drive steering. And so that's what's the news this week. Obviously, we had a bunch of uh, exciting news there from the pre Shizuka uh, show information. Uh, hopefully, if we didn't have anything you were going to spend your money on this week, we have uh, found you some things to spend your money on over the summer. Uh, June, July going to be uh, big months coming. Now, granted, uh, especially the Aoshima stuff, let's face it, it'll probably get delayed into you know July and August and whatnot, but... Uh, and that BMAC stuff, like I said, probably not going to come out on time either based on their really optimistic release schedule. Uh, but, it, you know, at least you know what to look forward to in the uh, late second quarter, early third quarter of the year out of Japan. It's going to be uh, a good year, looks like. At least it's been a good uh, first half of the year based on uh, current releases and uh, projected releases. So there you go. We'll Get you guys uh, next week when everything is uh, much different than it is this week. And uh, we're going to try to keep this show schedule on Friday like it is right now. It'll just be a matter of uh, finding places that we can uh, connect to the Internet and upload the videos. So best of luck with that. We'll uh, play that as it lies. Burn the bridge as we get to it, as you say. So anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the other side.